couple of weeks or so ago, I talked about two people in the Bible with the initials M and M, Mary and Martha. And today I'm thinking of another couple who we meet in the New Testament. They have the initials A and P. Their story is told in the book of Acts. And I've no doubt that you have guessed that I would like to share some thoughts with you about Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila and Priscilla were a Jewish husband and wife. They were living in Rome when the Emperor Claudius expelled all the Jews from that city. And this was the result of several clashes between those of the Jewish committee, community where there was opposing opinions about the Christian faith. So Aquila and Priscilla left Rome and settled in Corinth. But even there, they were not safe from the continued persecution. And so they would move from place to place. But as they traveled around on their frequent journeys, they would take every opportunity to share their Christian beliefs. I often wonder if those who made it necessary to keep such people moving ever thought that in actual fact, they were in fact doing a grand job by enabling the Christian message to be spread far and wide beyond their imaginations. And it certainly did nothing to stamp out the faith that these early Christians held. This was certainly very true of Aquila and Priscilla, as they quickly learned to turn their diffi difficult circumstances to their advantage. There's a very appropriate quote that comes to mind from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Aquila and Priscilla, like all Jews, whoever they were, always had a craft that they could use. And in their case, it was the craft of tent making, the same as that of Paul. So when Paul arrived in Corinth, this is perhaps how he came to know them. No doubt, they would probably have exchanged views on all manner of subjects, and they would have told him of all that had happened to them and why they had had to leave Rome. When later Paul left Corinth, husband and wife went with him as far as Ephesus, where they, re they remained. Paul later said these words whilst he was in Rome. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. And it is thought that possibly after the death of Emperor Claudius, that the two of them returned to Rome. Not only did they spread the good news of the gospel, but they were also very able teachers, particularly to, to, particularly to one named Apollos, who knew the teachings of the Old Testament so well, but he was not so well versed in the teaching and ministry of Jesus. Priscilla, having heard him speak, realized that there was a gap and that needed to be filled. And so Aquila and Priscilla took it upon themselves to instruct him, or as we read in Luke's gospel, to explain to him the way of God more accurate, adequately. They became well known and trusted as leaders, holding meetings in their home, not only at Ephesus, but also later on their return to Rome. What I found fascinating was that in the few times, I think it is six times, the cup that the couple are mentioned, it is more often that Priscilla's name comes before that of her husband Aquila. Perhaps she was more gifted or more positive or perhaps even more bossy. But both of them were as husband and wife obviously valued and well liked. 
and over the years of living in any parts of the different parts of the country, I have so often met with husbands and wives who have shared the same faith and have worked together to talk to others and to spread the news of God's love and forgiveness. Janet and Barry were two that I really do remember as they became close friends of John and myself. Janet was a fervent follower of Jesus and she would talk to everyone and anyone at the drop of a hat about her faith. Barry came to share that faith a little later and was then just as enthusiastic. So much so that they eventually left our church to join the Salvation Army. Their ministry there was so exciting to witness, but somewhat daunting to myself in particular, as I never had that same courage to speak out as openly as they did. They soon became captains in the army, and they did sterling work for many years, until sadly they both died within a few months of each other. So what qualities or abilities do you think are necessary requirements in order to have an effective ministry? Look around sometime and see if you see those qualities in someone you know. Would you encourage them to think about taking on a leadership role, not just in an ordained capacity, but to use whatever gifts God may have given them and to reassure them of your support and your prayers and to remind them that if God has chosen them for a particular task, then as promised, he will be with them as they enter on a new journey, just as he was with Aquila and Priscilla, as they were able to turn their troubles into a new venture. If you want to read about this lovely couple for yourselves, their story is told in Acts chapter 18, but they're also mentioned in some of Paul's letter. Their story really gives us the encouragement we may need to act as good ambassadors for Christ. And so a few moments of prayer. Father, as we come to you in prayer, we give thanks for the freedom we enjoy in our times of worship and witness. We pray for all those who witness to you in their daily life and work particularly for those who do so in, in difficult and sometimes dangerous circumstances. May they know your presence with them there all the time. We bring to you all those who work for Christian unity, breaking down barriers and endeavouring to build bridges of trust, respect and cooperation. Loving Father, guide us, your people. Strengthen, equip each one of us to answer your call. May we joyfully serve you. Make us ambassadors as we show your love for all those we know and meet. And finally, the words of a collect that we have used in this past week. O oh Lord, we beseech you mercifully to, mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you. Grant that they both, may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and may also have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you now and always. So please keep well and safe until we meet again. God bless you all.